Hello and welcome to episode five of the Be Unbound podcast. We've made it all the way to number five. So thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for listening. And also before we get into this week's podcast, which is an interview with an exceptional alumni, Abraham Chen, um, slash not quite alumni, which we'll get into (laughs) later in this podcast, but basically alumni. Um, and if that's not an interesting enough teaser for you, I think that's pretty juicy. So I would keep listening if I were you. But before we get into that, I just want to let you guys know that we've just launched a referral campaign. And the reason that we've done that is because we believe that unbound students are the best people to help the community continue to thrive. You guys know best who is the right fit for unbound and who is a good, like who would be great to build into the community to continue to provide these opportunities um, for people like you moving forward. And so in order to do that, we put together a little offer. You can go to beunbound.us slash refer, and you can read about the offer and you can get your unique referral link. Now, what happens is once you generate that link and you share it with your friend, they can apply for Unbound's new Ascend program. And if your friend enrolls, then you get free registration and travel to one Unbound event of your choice. That could be any Unbound event um, that's open to alumni. And so that's, you know, if you're talking about Apex, you're talking about upwards of like an $800 value potentially. Um, And you also get free access to Unbound's new Navigate course. Um, This is not the same as the old Navigate course. This is a new one. It's being redeveloped. It's pretty exciting. You can go to beunbound.us slash navigate if you want to learn more about it but that's a $200 value. So you get a lot of free stuff if somebody that you refer enrolls. Um, and in addition to that, the, the student that you, in, that you refer gets $500 off enrollment. So it's a good deal for you. It's a good deal for your friend. Um, and we'd love to have that student as a part of our program because they come with your recommendation. So go to beunbound.us slash refer and you can get your own uh, special referral link. Yeah. If you're an OG, um, then I can just say that you know the value of those events. Um, And if you're new to the program, welcome. You don't want to miss out on these events. So, yeah, like get in the program, refer someone, go for it. There you go. Now you've heard it from Abraham himself. First things first, I have to point out, I can't help but notice that you're wearing a College Plus shirt. Like, I know. It's that's ancient. Bruh, uh, represent. I'm I'm the last of the CP year, so gotta that's, represent man. Well, I mean I'm there too, bro, but I got you. Well, there um, you go. We're, we're in the same generation. The few, the that, proud. Right? The yes. few, the proud. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um so that's a that's a good piece of um it's a good piece of history there. I've got I've got that um charcoal CP hoodie. That's that's my like Yo, yeah, and I I've got it, like, those. I've got it like uh, preserved. Like I should put it in a glass case because I basically never wear it. I wear it every once in a while, but almost never. So, uh, plus I live in Texas, so that kind of explains that too. Well, um, bring it to the next uh, event or whatnot. Yeah, that is the plan. Because at this point, wearing CP merch is not like a brand problem. It's a flex. Like it's a hundred percent approved. Oh, and yeah. like if you have it, wear it, man. Thank so, you. um. So yeah, I think we're just going to go through it. We're going to keep it pretty casual. I'm just going to ask a few questions. I think first one is just for in particular for students who may not be as familiar with you is just how did you find Unbound and how did you get involved with this community? Yeah. Um, but first off, hey, fam, how's it going? Um, it's a long, weird story. So uh, I was homeschooled. So shout out to like 90% of you guys because homeschoolers. Um, but I had the opportunity to uh, do a bunch of stuff throughout high school. Um, the last year or so of high school, I was interning out of state, um, and there were some people at the program I was at, um, staffers who were actually doing college online. And I thought, huh, this is interesting because they're working their butts off, but they're still doing classes and getting credit. This is really cool. And that is kind of when I first heard the name College Plus. I'm so glad we don't have to censor that name now. <laughs> Long story, we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's when I first heard about it. And then um, I talked to some other people I knew who were like, oh, you're doing this college bus thing too. Okay. Um, I think I want to go to a traditional brick and mortar school. I'm never doing that. 
And then um, if you learn anything from this, from listening to this, never say never. Uh, <laughs> and so down the road, um, yeah, I, I, long story short, I, I did um, a gap year after high school and um, came back for a business trip. And I found out that I, I was applying for schools um, already for college and all that. And then I came back, found out that all my scholarships had fallen through. It was just like this weird freak thing. And I'm like, crap, I'm stuck here in New York City. Um, like, what the heck? And my mom came up to me and like, oh, so I also heard about this thing called College Plus at this uh, conference from some friends. Do you want to check this out? And I'm like, mom, we talked about this. I'm not doing this whole online college thing. I'm not living here in the basement for God knows how long. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we started talking and that's how I heard about what is now Unbound. Here I am. That's awesome. And of course, we can all see in the background that you're still in that basement. So that's <laughs> one thing that hasn't changed. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But that's cool. I mean, that's cool. And I think everyone kind of has their own way of um, their own way of finding the community. Um, totally. And that's really neat. I think one thing, too, is like you were saying, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, is that we're both kind of a part of that same generation, which was sort of when the when the whole community aspect of Unbound was really kind of like starting to warm up. Um, yeah. And so I think something that's interesting, it might be interesting to some students right now, is just kind of like, how did you uh, forge some of those initial friendships with students? So like, because, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, all right, I guess, uh, let me ask this first. Do you think that you would have stayed in the program as long as you did if you weren't involved in the community? Hmm. Definitely not. So uh, I already told you that I talked to my parents about this whole online college thing. Um, but I think it was really providential where everything literally just opened up, lined up, and I found myself enrolling for uh, this online college thing. I had no idea how this was going to work. I knew nothing about this. I wanted community. Um, I knew that was important. So um, at the time, uh, I was, you know, I still had coaching calls. And I remember the first uh, call I had, I told my coach, uh, yeah, I uh, I want community again. I don't want to be stuck in my mom's basement and all that. So, um, do you have any suggestions on that? And so my coach uh, Jay, shout out to Jay, but he was like, "All right, very good. So first action step: uh, you're going on a power call tomorrow. All right, you're gonna show up and you're gonna have fun. And then bye. And I'm like, what the heck is a power call? <laughs> So at that time, um, I think I had like said hi on forums. I don't like the Facebook group. I don't even know if that existed back then. That was like really early on. Um, I honestly don't remember. I think it did, but it was just not very, uh, you know, popular, I guess. I uh, got in right before CP3 Apex. And uh, so I got on forums and a couple other just, uh, you know, student marketing and things like that. And everyone was talking about Apex. Are you going to CP3, you know, CP3 height? And I'm like, who are these people? This is so weird. I have no idea what the heck this is. Everyone's uh, <laughs> super excited about this whole community thing. I have no idea what this is. Uh, yeah. And anyways, um, yeah, so I, I got on that power call. That's how I met a lot of, um, you know, people that I've stuck around with. And, yeah, that's how community started. So I think community was one of the things that definitely got me into the program and has stuck with me and has been a huge encouragement. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, w I don't think I would have done the program without it because um, it's not just like, oh, yeah, you got friends kind of thing. Uh, but when you have people who are also doing things differently, people who understand you, um, and it's a really good kind of peer pressure, I guess, because mm -hmm. maybe we'll touch on this later. Um, at least when I got it, like, yo, a good majority of people who were doing Unbound, because it's an online, you know, remote program, all the people were like, you know, 
uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, artists, people, our authors, this guy who I'm talking to like as a filmmaker, <laughs> just like all sorts of stuff. And it's always like a really positive like encouragement to be like, yo, there's people out there doing cool stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and so I guess, um, and now that you're, you know, you're, I guess you're almost done with school, right? You're, you're just, almost, you're very yes. close. Yeah. But you're, you're kind of, um, you've got more things going on in your life right now, right? In terms of like work and everything else. What are you up to these days? Yeah. Full honesty. Um, I'm not completely done with school. So I'll finish you up uh, a couple of Sorry to call you out on that one. <laughs> no, I, I told Ben before I'm like, ah, technically. Anyways. Um, yeah, I'm currently, uh, I've been working full time for the past uh, two years, but I've been working at several different uh, things um, throughout the year. So I feel like I've, I've been working basically throughout mm -hmm. uh, college and uh, it's not always been full-time work, but it's always been full-time hours with work. And, you know, that's where Ben has come in a lot. Currently I work at um, a dormitory for international high school students. So kids, high school kids come from Asia over here to the States to study. I'm the one who hosts them uh, at a dorm, make sure they um, are connected with school, have tutoring, sometimes I tutor them, uh, make sure they don't kill each other, um, you know, just handle things and also run programs for um, kids coming over for camps and things like that. So kids from Italy, from Japan, um, other countries. Currently, uh, Due to COVID, I'm not working full time, but we will see. Um, interesting times, but I'm doing that. Um, I'm a, I also work with um, special education kids, um, also similar to tutoring, but it's more of working on life skills and um, it's called a community habilitation. So helping them learn different life skills and things like that. And uh, besides that, I also do some freelance video work. Um, I'm a video editor and working on my filmmaking skills. So I do that when I have time and then I do school. So. Dang. That's <laughs> a lot. That sounds like a lot, man. Um, but I think too, like that's one of those things that was for me, that was a big benefit of being an about was just the amount of flexibility that I had to do things professionally on the side. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. then I felt like by the time that I graduated, I had a degree, but I had so much professional experience that I already had like plenty of job opportunities and like uh, professional relationships. Um, yeah. And it's like just the fact that you could do those things in parallel is uh, is a huge benefit. So that's super cool. Um, really? And I think too, like um, being in this community, I guess what if you're like, what have your travels been like and, and how has that sort of, has any of that, would you say it's expanded your perspective? Would you say it's just been kind of fun? Like how would you sort of qualify that? Oh, totally. Um, well, I think because of Unbound, I quite literally know people all over the world, um, for sure all over the country. So I, I tell people that I can pretty much go to any state and find someone that I know, which is, pretty cool mm -hmm. um and uh yeah i just because of unbound you know i've been able to travel um yeah really all over the country you know when you you go somewhere like for apex for example um i'm seeing friends in chicago and then i'm you know going up to michigan and seeing other friends there um it's always like connected and you know after that i got to uh, you know, be at a wedding in Indianapolis. And then it's, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's cool. And, and I guess just based on that, I mean, you've, you've been in the community for a few years, you know, a lot of the mm -hmm. students in different areas and like the different backgrounds. So I guess yeah. in your mind, like, and this is something that I've thought actually spent some time thinking about, not just because I work here now, but even in the community, because it's one of those things. It's like, it's difficult. It's difficult to explain to somebody who hasn't experienced it, what it's like to be in the community. Exactly. Oh, yeah. um, and we've talked about this a little bit in some of our previous podcasts, just like the level of intentionality and yeah. that kind of thing. But so in your mind, like what makes, like what makes someone a good fit for Unbound? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, I think that, uh, hmm. 
I, I think that, you know, there are certain uh, traits we laugh about, you know, being of bounders. So a lot of us are homeschooled. Um, you know, a lot of us grew up with veggie tales, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, there's these things that uh, kind of make us an unbounder. But I think for reals, though, um, one thing I've seen for unbound people is definitely the intentionality to um, to learn and grow. Because, you know, when you're doing school, kind of bit like online, on uh, a lot of times by yourself, which means you have to schedule out your own your own classes and mm -hmm. figure out your own uh, schedule and all that. Uh, there is intentionality to learn. Um, again, like I said, I think I'm just blessed because when getting in a lot of people in my uh, class or just people that I was around were in Unbound because they were living life and they were doing other mm -hmm. things uh, while pursuing a, a degree. I think Ellie mentioned this on a previous podcast too, where it was like, um, the focus is on living life, mm -hmm. you know, and then you get a degree on the side. And so that was huge. And, you know, if you're someone who, um, yeah, wants to do something different, um, you want to get your degree, but you, um, you could, you have an idea of what you want to do and you want to pursue that, or maybe you don't know what you want to do and you want some time to get out in the real world and explore, um, this is what you can do because, you know, you're getting a community, you know, a, a school structure that supports you um, doing school. And, you know, it, it is a program. So I think that's huge where I've known other people who have done like the hardcore OG legit online school where they literally plan out everything by themselves. And those people are insane. I, really <laughs> I have so much uh, respect for them, but um it's just cool that, you know, as part of the Unbound program, you get, you know, a structured school, you know, system, um, education, but at the same time, you have the flexibility to pursue your interests or to grow in other areas and, yeah, explore and really continue to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And one of those areas that you've been able to explore in particular is, is with videography, right? Mm -hmm. And so I actually, um, I asked Jared Wiggins what I should ask you. Um, <laughs> because, and this was actually yesterday, like one hour before I noticed that he got engaged on Facebook. So yeah, then he Shout actually replied. To my man, Jared. To yeah. And I was like, what are you doing replying to me? You just got engaged. But uh, so shout out to Jared for helping me out, even though he clearly had other priorities. Um, but he, he said that I should ask you what your biggest challenge was as a videographer. Okay. So just overall, in general, through, through all the years. I think he was probably getting at that first time you did Apex Vlogs. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, that was the sure. question. Yeah. And so uh, for some of you guys who don't know, um, I had the privilege to be an intern. Um, was that, the, that was before your time, right? Then, yeah, that was before you. Yes. You were. Yeah, it was like after I was on the cabinet, but it was. Yeah, yeah you were a cabinet that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got to work with Jonathan and um, Aubrey as a video intern. And so I helped run a YouTube channel for a year. And then before that, I was kind of uh, <laughs> doing all the random editing and all the videography work as well. So that that's a big chunk of what I did. And then obviously, um, my work after that, but I think huh, one thing that I do love and hate, and I want to hear from you, Ben, because you do this too. Like I'm sure you have your stories. Um, I just love and hate how every single project, uh, project that you do, there's almost always like a crazy story behind it. Um, there's Murphy's Law. If something can go wrong, it usually will, and um, I love it because that's part of the fun. You never know what's going to happen and you kind of have to be creative and deal with it. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I love with my personality. I'm just like, all right, I, I hate <laughs> there's random things popping up, but just being creative and finding solutions is fun. Um, but yes, it is very annoying. Uh, almost every single video I've done for Unbound 
there is a crazy story behind it. Something broke down or something got lost or something got corrupted. I don't know. Um, yeah, so there's that. And I think also just the beauty of videography is that there's always something more that you can learn. Um, mm -hmm. That is something I enjoy because you can always be creative. Um, you can always find something else that you're like, oh, man, I suck at this so bad and I'm going to you know, work on it. And uh, for me personally, I try to at least kind of mess with a new technique or something new every single video I do. And so, yeah, that's been, that's been interesting. How about yeah. for you? Well, like you have way more experience in videography. I don't know about that. You. But, <laughs> um, you, you just uh, specifically like biggest challenge type thing? Sure. Well, again, since we're, we're uh, talking Unbound too, what has been the most crazy or difficult Unbound video project that you've done? Well, let's see. Um... I would say uh, in the, at, on the, at the 2016 Apex, like that was the first year we offered a video package. Um, yeah. And so like I was on the hook for that. So I had to figure out how to get like cameramen, get all these angles. And then you had to like figure out what to do with all the footage when you were done. It's like now I have yep. three angles of like eight lectures <laughs> that are all an hour long. And this is going to. So I was like, it wasn't done until like November or something crazy like that. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, that was like a, that was a huge undertaking. Um, mm -hmm. and that, and I learned a lot because, and that wasn't necessarily the videos themselves weren't like ridiculously complicated or they yeah. require a ton of creativity in like the actual like post-production, but just, the uh, like, it was really good experience. Just the sort of production experience of like, like assembling a team and like actually creating a product at the end, um, yeah. for like a group of students. And so, that was something that was really educational. And then um, also when I joined the company in 2018, I did a series of vlogs and that was the first time I'd ever vlogged. Um, and part of that was I did all these vlogs that were uh, um, of the old office. And so yeah. I was trying to get like staff to like, let me film them while they're trying to work. And then I would like make people do things for me. It was really awkward. And then I'd be trying to film. And it was just like, it was one of those things where you watch something like a vlog and you're like, Oh, this doesn't really like that. Like vlogs are very amateur, but at the same sure. time, like, or at least they're perceived as very amateur. But mm -hmm. when you actually try to vlog, you realize oh, like, yeah. that it takes like a very, like there's a set of skills that's required. <laughs> totally. And one of those skills is like not caring that people are like <laughs> this guy recording himself in public, particularly because at the time I had this enormous camera. So I look ridiculous. Like it wasn't just like, this little like flip, you know, whatever point and shoot. It was just exactly. enormous. And I was like, ah. and, it, and like, so, you know, there was a lot of things like that. That was a good learning curve. And then even something that a lot of people in the community probably haven't seen is um, for the company um, to help, you know, educate uh, potential students and potential uh, parents of students or not potential parents, but parents of potential students. Um, I have to be precise with my language. Um, <laughs> um, hey, down the road. I mean, you never know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Is I made this like really complicated video that actually described like the entire process from like mm. being interested in enrolling all the way to like being a student and being in nice. the community. And it encompassed the whole thing, but it involved like like infinite white backgrounds. I had to get like I had to coordinate. I think it was like close, like seven or eight. Uh, staff people to like be in the video. We had to write the script for everyone. I had to feel personalized yeah. and individualized. And then I did like this screen sharing thing. Anyway, it was like, there was a ton of like moving parts. That was probably from like an editing standpoint, that's probably the most complicated thing I've ever done yeah. because it was like, you know, three nested sequences into a master that created this whole thing. It was crazy. So um, definitely, yeah, there's been a lot of different things like that where like, just like you said, each video kind of presents its own unique challenges you learn something different every time. Um, and sometimes you learn lessons that you feel like you should have known for a long time, like make an extra backup of your footage or <laughs> like you learn something more complicated. Like how do I, how do I build this really complex, you know, sequence of, uh, of clips to you yeah. know, create a particular video. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you pointed out that, um, there's videos that you're like, Oh, I could do that. That looks pretty simple. Well, that's a quick edit. It's never a quick edit. Yeah. It's never a simple video. Um, there's always work and skill that goes into it. So yeah. can I just say shout out to you for um, 2016 Apex doing that 
uh, closing video too, and just like editing at night with Aubrey. I oh, remember I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. It was uh, so, it was Cameron, Aubrey, and I. We were all editing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Shout out to Cam Dog if he's listening. He's probably mm-hmm. not, but. Uh, but man, I mean, that was the back in the day again. So like when I, as a little dweeb freshie, was looking up to all these guys like Ben, who were like doing all the video work. Um, yeah, I just remember it was a really sick video. It's still on the YouTube channel, so go check that out. Yeah. Um, but that's I think how we I don't know if you did that for CP3 um, the year before, but I think from my understanding, that's when you guys started doing like the whole video thing. Um, you know for the end of Apex, and that's where we got the idea to do a video for the next Apex, and then turn it to every single day, and then there's that story, but... <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool stuff. Oh, um, well, that's that's super cool, and I'm really glad that uh, you could join us. Obviously, this is far too short to get into everything, <laughs> um, but I, you know, hopefully for a couple of students out there, this was, uh, this is kind of connecting them to some of the um, the folks that have been around for a little while longer, um, which I think is is kind of fun. And in a lot of ways, I, I believe that what we're doing with Unbound now is kind of bringing back some of that older spirit, um, some of that those things that we're talking about with the community. It's like, mm-hmm. those are the things that we're really championing on the front end. It's kind of the, the, the thing that we're leading with is, is the community is prioritizing your life. It's like, yes, academics are in the program, but we really want to enable exceptional Christian students, you know, typically homeschool students to, um, you know, live um, an exceptional life, to develop as leaders, to become better friends, better family members, um, and to provide a platform and to provide opportunities um, to get those skills. And so um, I'm really glad you come on and talk about some of the ways that Unbound is provided that for you. Um, and sure. as I said, guys, don't forget to go to be unbound.us slash refer, and you can submit someone or you can generate your own link to uh, refer a friend to apply. And if one of your friends enrolls in Unbound's new Ascend program, you can get uh, free registration and travel to one event of your choice per student who enrolls. So if you get two students, that's two events and you get free access to um, Unbound's new Navigate course, which is launching next month. Um, And the student that you refer gets $500 off enrollment. That's a pretty big deal. So go to beunbound.us slash refer. If you're listening to this podcast and you're one of those OGs and you know somebody that sounds like they might fit into this community, um, you know somebody that sounds like Abraham from four years ago, then (laughs) go to that link. Um, you could generate your own link. We will then um, make sure that we track that enrollment. We'll reach out to you and we'll make sure that you can come to, you know, Apex or whatever the case may be um, uh, when you decide to uh, to redeem that. So uh, once again, Abraham, thank you for joining us and we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you. This was fun. See you guys around.